or thing. Now, what more does this statement talk about? Well, the statement talks about the issue of the cost of the plant, due diligence on the Amari Energy Power Plant, and also the last matter on what they make of how this whole story has panned out and the general situation with power across the country and with the indulgence. The issue of cost of plants. The ministry says that the agreement with Amery is a build, own, operate, and transfer agreement and not an outright purchase of the generating plants. You do know that for Amery, they're bringing in, they've actually brought in 10 gas turbines. Each should provide 25 megawatts of power. So collectively, we're expecting to get some 250 megawatts of power from the Amery. Says it has not made any payments to Amery and will not be making any payments for the cost of the equipment. But the agreement with Amery. Government through the VRA will only make payments to Amery for power produced and supplied to the VRA, just like any other independent power producer. Also, a standby letter of credit for an amount of $51 million, uh, which LC has been raised, according to the ministry. And they, will, uh, they also talk about eventual ownership of the equipment after five years of production and the sale of the power. Uh, to the VRA. We do know that the, the initial agreement was that for five years, we're ready to help us in generating the power from the Amory plants. And then after five years, when all the payments have been made from the tariffs, then they hand over the equipment to Ghana. That's the bit on the issue of the cost of the plants. On the matter of due diligence, and that has been the biggest issue. Exactly. Uh, entered into any agreement with Umar Farouk Zahu. And this name is important because exactly. the Norwegian newspaper indicated that he's a man who's wanted by the Norwegian police and also by Interpol. Some dealings he's had in setting up a fake bank in Switzerland, some other issues of money that have been, you know, uh, some people being duped by this man. That's the crux was. But again, the Ghanaian government and the power ministry is indicating that the agreement they signed was not with Umar Farouk uh, Farouk Zahu. The government of Ghana has an agreement with Ameri Energy, and that the chairman of uh, Ameri Energy is Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum, who signed the agreement. For him. So Umar Farouk did sign. He but, did sign. But he signed as a, as a witness. Exactly. And I'll come to the bit on Ameri's own explanation of what has happened and what they make of this publication uh, by the VG. It says that the Bank of Ghana also, before establishing the standby LC, conducted its own due diligence. So they point to a number of agencies that did due diligence on this particular company and did an independent due diligence confirming the standby LC for the project. It doesn't mention about the company in itself. It's saying that JP Morgan did its own due diligence on the standby letters of credit for the project. Letters of credit will be um, that letter that the you will be able to pay the amount of money for the plants that will come in in, in the event of any uh, mishap or eventuality that comes up. So that's for the matter of due diligence. They are saying that uh, government represented by the power ministry also conducted due diligence on Amery Energy and reviewed strenuously the project's agreed agreements before submitting it to parliament. And that upon receipt, also scrutinized and reviewed the agreements before approving it at the committee level unanimously and later by the house but here's what's interesting mm. and from saturday when the story broke i've been following this trying to get some understanding from parliament what i hear is that by the hansard records this came in under a certificate of emergency which meant that the committee did not have too much time, too much time to, to scrutinize this document properly and you know duly sanctioned it it's an emergency. They had to do quick checks, dot the I's and cross the T's, and then they let it go. But some members of the committee have been raising concerns that enough time is about value for money. Why we are paying such an amount of money under emergency? And upon hindsight, here we are. General Electric, per what they were told, could have provided these plants within nine months. This was signed in February. We are in November. We are actually in December, which meant if we are say we could have received it directly from them. Even if we didn't want General Electric and we wanted Mecta, which is also a part of the energy sector, they also provide services in terms of power and equipment, which Ameri Group actually consulted to get us these plants. If we went directly to them, we could have gotten it at a far so lesser price. So Ameri, in all this, acted just yeah. as a conduit, sort of? As an investment group. And Mecta through to General Electric, exactly. Interesting. But it is interesting you speak of a due diligence here. But let, let's take a listen to Ben Bosch of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. He's also been raising some questions about uh, recent contracts the country has signed uh, to better the energy. 
uh, on it. One thing that is so curious also is that when this whole thing started, it was APR in the picture. APR is a big, renowned supplier of equipment, you know, uh, of this nature. And even if you look at the president's statement, uh, State of the Nation Address, mm. it's APR that is rather mentioned in the statement. So at what point from APR to Medca? Could it be that uh, Medca was cheaper? I mean, by Medca, those, I mean Amiri, actually. Those explanations can come from the minister. Mm. I mean, they were, they were involved in all of that. And the new APR was in the deal. There are a lot of speculations around it that we can. But mm. those explanations can come from the Ministry of Power. At what point did we transition uh, from APR to Medca? And that, did that not warrant that we go in on our own to go and get the plans? Mm. I mean, we have been talking about this court, uh, the cost of buying on our own. If you did the value for money analysis and you plans on your, on your own will cost $220 million. would it not have been prudent to even take a loan and go for it? Because this tariff that has been put in, 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 in the statement that uh, uh, they gave to Parliament come for a loan and pay uh, the $350 million in two years. So what stopped us from going for a loan and buying and paying for it in two years rather than paying for it in five years. You know, so these are the, the, the bigger questions that uh, 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 we will need uh, answers from. And the whole thing about money that has been mentioned, I mean, everybody is implicated in this. You have VRA in there. They went to parliament to justify this. You have the attorney general, and you heard the reporter say that the guy's name would have popped up you know, it's taught to do that due diligence. But let's not so, ignore the fact that, uh, according to the statement, you know, the, the J.P. Morgan, mm. which played a role in this as well, uh, did their own due diligence uh, before this LC uh, of, I think, 51 million mm. was, uh, was arranged. J.P. Morgan, I think we can expect that they do uh, some pretty decent due for several deals. Uh, are you surprised that they didn't raise any issue with the CEO, Umar Farouk Zahor? I don't know, but I think if JP, JP Morgan wants to do due diligence for letters of credit issued by government of Ghana, it will be on the government of Ghana mm. and not on letters to say that if we fail to pay, uh, they should come to us mm. for the money. So their uh, uh, responsibility was rather towards the government of Ghana mm. to make sure that we have the capacity to pay. Is it when unfair we, to expect we, we that default. they at least but look again, the company? I mean, the onus is on the ministry to prove that and give us the details. At this point, this is a, a man at large, you know, who has been able to strike a big deal uh, in Ghana. It goes to dent our reputation. And um, nobody is accusing anybody, but we need to exonerate ourselves, you know, as a country. Because the image out there is so bad that are popping up and there is um, a, a specialist a corruption specialist who has put out an opinion uh, saying that she's been in Ghana she's worked in Ghana she's lectured on corruption she cannot attribute this to lack of capacity to negotiate mm. you know such a deal but she so that was Ben Boachi of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. I still have here with me in studio Francis Arban of our energy desk, and uh, he has been following this particular issue keenly. So, Francis, uh, we, we did hear him speak there, but let, let's talk about your correspondence with uh, authorities. I'm uh, asking them a lot of questions. Well, what, yes, what I've been sending say? a lot of mails to the uh, chief executive and board member of Ameri Group LLC. He's called Ziad Barakat. Now, I asked them about the contract, uh, the matter about the cost involved, mm -hmm. the $510 million and what goes into it. Now, he explained that uh, they have awarded the contract to MECTA for over 350 turbines, balance of plant installation, and commissioning of the project. Now, the operation and maintenance costs, financial costs, political risk insurance, management costs, and return on investment is on top. As to what this particular sentence means, I don't know. I've been trying to get... It says that the repayment of our investment as per the agreement is $510 million used over a period of five years to be paid through energy generated by the power plant sold to end user at current market price of electricity duly approved by the regulatory authority. On the matter of Omar Farouk and the question that I've been asked about why we are dealing with a man like 
to do a job. We're told by the correspondents that he's worked with them for only six months. Says Mr. Farouk worked around six months for the company and resigned as he was offered some bigger business opportunities. And during the time of his engagement, he had no outstanding issues with any authority was conducted. The news about him, and these are the words of Ziyad Barakat, says the news about him being wanted is very recent and learned through media. We still have not seen any evidence of this fact. So what it means is that from January till June this year, this man, Farouk, was working, was working wa for Amery Group LLC. It's only stated that he was a witness, but if you do checks online, it shows that this man actually worked as, as the chief executive officer of the company. Again, I asked the CEO the question as to in what capacity he served for Amery Group. Up until now, he has not responded to that statement. He is not. Clarifying that the government of Ghana has not paid them any money at all for this project, but will start to pay only after the project becomes operational and have produced electricity for at least 30 days under the agreement duly ratified by the Parliament of Ghana. Again, there's a contradiction here because in this same statement, he says that uh, all the machinery and equipment arrived to the project site currently being installed and will be operational by the end of the year. So the question is, who paid? for the machinery and equipment. Quite interesting there. Yes. But, okay, so what has this, what has all this, all these technical things, what do they really mean? Is that what it means is that, and mind you, today, 14th December 2015, yeah. per the announcement we got from the PURC, we start paying the new tariffs today for electricity. The computation is to the tariffs is that independent power producers like Carpa, like Emery, will get their tariffs and their money through what we pay to them for, for the electricity we consume. So that means that if we're to for a unit of uh, power from Amery, mm, if, we, if, we, if we got a plan for $220 million, we'll have paid less than half of this amount. What it means is that we're paying a lot more in tariffs for, for power which we could have negotiated downwards. What it means for you and I. It means that we are paying a lot more for the power we're consuming if actually if government had done a bit of work on this, we could have paid a lot less. Right. Many thanks for that update, Francis Aban. And uh, Francis Aban is my colleague with the Energy Desk here. And uh, you can see he's very thorough with all the things he brought to us this morning. And uh, Mr. News Multi TV, time now for business with Imano Ejeriafe. And in other news, former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Nigeria, Professor Atahiru Jaga, is in Ghana to address a public lecture on is mounting on the Electoral Commission to make significant changes in how elections are run in the country. Now, speaking exclusively to Kujia Yangsen on the Super Morning Show, Professor Jaga admitted that although the theory of electoral reforms is agreeable to all parties, there's always policies are implemented. Now he shared his experience in changing electoral processes in Nigeria. There were many reform initiatives which we introduced and which uh, some uh, partisans uh, perceived as detrimental to their own electoral uh, interests. Mm -hmm. verify the authenticity of voters on election day it was not uh, well received by some parties. Although before we initiated this project, we had interactions and dialogue with all stakeholders, including political parties, and they as important in improving the integrity of the electoral process. But I think very close to the election, some people realized that uh, 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 the kind of integrity we wanted for the election we wanted mm -hmm. and didn't want us to proceed with this. And we remained focused and insisted it had to be done. And I suspect that some of the demands for my resignation or for my going on early uh, pre-retirement leave 
uh, were associated with, with those uh, issues. Now, another issue of interest to improve the integrity of elections on the African continent is the question of financing. Now, should African governments finance political parties like the continent's political landscape? The answer is far from simple. Pros and the cons are the, are the uh, challenges or identified irregularities with the register so substantial that you need to jettison it. Uh, are the resources available? And you have to do not just a cost benefit in terms of the cost of producing the register. stakeholders in each uh, a country uh, because these issues have to be properly uh, examined and an assessment made dispassionately and on a non-partisan basis mm. uh, because we shouldn't forget that uh, also political interests uh, would always also come to bear in terms of those who want a new register or those who just want a cleaned up register. So I wouldn't want to get too much into the mm. Ghanaian debate, but I think what is most important is a consensus in terms of what level of integrity do people want in their register. And that was Professor Atahiru Jaga of the, the Nigerian uh, Commission there, uh, telling us much more about what he thinks the way forward is for Africa. Uh, concerned. And uh, that's how we wrap up News Desk here on Joe News Multi TV. My name is Kwabena Chen Chenhine Boating. There's more news on myjoinonline.com. Joins you, we we'll join you today. But up next now is Johnny's Interactive with Nia Kofi Smart Have a good morning.